Greetings all. Sex here again for the 12th. 12th. I can't believe it. We're at 12 entries here. One more day. That's it. Of my 13 slays of Halloween. Bam. Can't believe I've done it. I still, I'm, I'm at it the most at the finish line. I mean, yesterday it was a very scary uh, sight. But I'm here again. And uh, here we are. Talking about pretty much John Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, come on. What can I say about this movie that I cannot have said already about this film? This is John Carpenter. Pretty much one of the best horror people in America in the 80s. Movie makers. He's done Halloween. He's done The Fog. He, I mean, this was the the thing was the first of his apocalypse trilogy which had the prince of darkness being the second entry you had in the mouse of madness being the third entry to this trilogy it's this is i mean of all the carpenter films i enjoy the most this is probably my third favorite or fourth favorite because i mean carpenter films are fickle I mean, just to make me choose i mean for always the top two it'll always be number one big trim a little china because that's the greatest film ever made Number two, Halloween. There aren't issues with Halloween, but it's just such a good film. I love it to death. I mean, the characters, the setup, the ending, everything about it is just magical. And the way how Carpenter filmed that is just amazing. I even got the, uh, uh, just pretty much the funding for it. For The Thing, which is my number three, but I do also love The Fog. The Fog's the underrated of his movies, the most underrated. I mean, I love Escape from New York. Hell, I love Escape from L.A. I know people criticize me for that, but I love Escape from L.A. I mean, that film is cheese, but that's just so wonderful cheese. If I'll watch that any day over anything from Michael Bay, ever. Seeing freaking Escape from L.A. Because it's Kurt Russell... John Carpenter doing what they do best and you can't fault that but let's go back rewind that back a little bit let's talk about the thing the thing I love about <laughs> the thing is pretty much a lot of it there's so much to love about this one this is probably Carpenter's magnum opus and like this almost perfect film there's nothing really bad about it unless you, you don't like bad endings because this movie is a whopper of just a fucked up ending <laughs> but it's so good I mean every, there's so much attention to this film in just the way Carpenter has the, the camera set up the way the scenery is put up the characters in this it's all just perfect the way he sets this and even better is the score I mean the score he did with Al uh, Hard blech, Hardworth I want to say it's its name if I screwed up his name I am sorry for that I mean I screw up so much I can't help that but him and uh, here's another name I'm going to fuck up uh, Nico the, blech, uh, let me look up here thing, just to make sure and Nico uh, Neo Morak Morkun? I don't say that name. Ah, I I know I fucked up. I'm sorry. I can't say names right sometimes. I mean, our Howarth is pretty much an underrated composer. I loved his Halloween uh, scores after Carpenter left the series. I mean, my favorite of Howarth's scores are pretty much Halloween Four. I mean, he just I mean, it takes Carpenter's themes to the next level. And so he does the same in five too. I mean, he just nailed it in uh, in all the films. He just does it except for six. I mean, six that's not really his fault because that was the last man change. I mean, he had a completely different score for that film. But I mean, anytime those two, and Carpenter and Howard appeared, you're gonna see a kick-ass score. You're gonna see a score. You're gonna love. I mean, that's the same thing in this movie. I mean, the theme is just iconic. And the characters on this are iconic. I mean, you have Kurt Russell, again, paired with Carpenter. And you get another, again, iconic character in McReady. McReady is a character, I mean, 
That's a question I pose one time in the Out House Forum. Like, what is the quintessential Kurt Russell character? Some people like Jack Burton. Some people like McGrady. Some people like Snake Plissken. Some people like his Wyatt Earp. Some people like other things he's done. But usually it's always between those three characters of Carpenter's he's played. Because those are the pretty much quintessential characters he's been. When you think Kurt Russell, you think of one of those three characters. Because they are just freaking badasses or a parody. That's we all know Jack Burton. We know he's a badass. He is a parody of an action hero character. That's his charm. <laughs> But uh, for McReady, though, McReady's scene is probably one of my favorite, like, calming scenes in the movie, where pretty much he has a you know, Jim Bean taking a sip of it, and he's playing a game of chess. And <laughs> like any natural person, he doesn't like the fact that the computer is a cheating bitch. So what does he do? He just gives the cheating bitch a little bit of a shot of Jim Bean. And it kind of destroys it, but it sets the character up so well that you know already ahead of time that this character is one who doesn't like to lose. He will do anything to win, and pretty much everything is pretty much can be sacrificed as long as he wins, and as long as the other his opponent doesn't win. And that just sets up his character's path through this entire movie is that this is a whole game of chess between him and the Thing, the alien creature in this movie. I mean, if they just listened to McReady, from the, the survivors in this film was to listen to McReady, they could have survived possibly more than him. They could have been a happy ending, probably. Doubtful, but there's a possibility, there was a small chance they could have survived. But nope, they had to be like the typical survivor warfare that they are, they had to just pretty much be a paranoid bunch, but that's what makes the thing a bunch. You don't know who the fuck is the thing in this movie. It could be anyone. And that's the another charm of the movie. You never know who these, like, these characters are so enduring, and you, you don't know, like, when a character is revealed as this creature, you're like, oh, fuck, they got him. And then pretty much you're like, oh, why? But then again, that's thing like in the movie there's always that controversy was child's child's pretty much was he the thing was he pretty much infected now the popular theory and it's a good pop theory is that he was because it's not because of the breath it's more the way he was dressed that's my evidence that the way the way they set the whole stuff up with carpenter set up the whole stuff with Childs. Honestly, I would say he was infected. Because he had different uh, clothes on than he had the scene before. And he was wearing something that he wasn't wearing before. That we saw him before. So, and that, that just, it's not the breath thing. It, he, he was breathing. So, it's not that. I, I think he was infected. And the, the clothes are more of a clue than pretty much his breath. Because you see him breathing, so you know he's a little alive. He's a breathing character. But you know that McGrady's going to kill his ass at the end of the movie after that, that scene went on dead. And because it just ends the right moment because you're, you already know McGrady's going to win, has won this game. No matter what the thing does, he can't win. McGrady has made a known situation for himself. Well, pretty much he's won, but he's going to die, but he's made sure he won. He made sure every living speck of that alien creature is burned in that base, and the only thing left is, if it is left, is Childs. And he ain't going to belong to the world either. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it all. I mean, this movie has so many freaking character actors, this movie. I mean, I've never, ever looked at Wolfram Brimley again. So every time I think of Wolfram Brimley before this movie, I saw this movie, was uh, my diabetes, and pretty much, I mean, that, that commercial you see was abused like in the late 90s and early 00s in the era. And pretty much, another thing I think of Wolfram Brimley is the manager, and the, the coach, and the natural. And he's so kind, so gentle. Fuck of things that in this movie. 
It's the anti-wolf and Ridley role for him, but I bet he had a ball in this movie. He probably really did. Uh, it's like I saw this movie back to back with that hard target when I really saw these movies of him. Like, oh wow, we're gonna look at Wolf and Ridley the same way again. He's a freaking badass. He ain't no diabetes man. He's a freaking walking killing machine. But uh, then there's pretty much. Uh, Battle Moth and Gary, as Gary the commanding guy, the commanding officer of the, of the base. I mean, he's an asshole, but you kind of sympathize with this thing. I mean, it was a slow approach the way he suggested things, and I feel sorry for the poor guy because McCready just left him to the dogs and pretty much. I mean, I still wonder how the hell he did the effect of his death scene. I mean, this that's another thing I love about this movie. The practical effects this way just still work. I love the effects in this movie. The creature design work, the gore effects are just amazing. When Gary's character is when Gary's character when Gary's killed, I still wonder how they did the mouth scene because it just amazes me how they did that scene. I, mean, I I just can't explain it. If for computer, modern day special effects, it's CGI. You know it looks cheap. It looks just. Oh, it's the word rubbery, or it just doesn't look detailed, or it just doesn't have that twinkle or life to it. I mean, CGI has improved. I'll admit that. I mean, I look at Godzilla, and I'm amazed the way CGI looks in that film. I mean, that was an amazing CGI film. I'll even admit. Transformers Age of Extinction was the best of the effects of these films. And that's all you're ever going to hear about me giving something positive to that film series. <sighs> okay, now that I got that out of the way, uh, I mean, but the, the, the practical effects here are just so top notch. Even though uh, they're freaking early 80s, they still look amazing. Even to today, I love this stuff. I am a fan of practical effects. I love pretty much the mechanical works. I love just pretty much. I mean, this is the era of just pretty much the painters of gore, where they knew how to design stuff. They knew how to make a body part look like like hacked apart or mangled or something like that. They knew how to kill you, <laughs> and. It made it not make it detailed. And this is probably like Carpenter's greatest gourd film ever. I mean, the way he... Whoever he hired for the effects in this film, this was his magnum opus of that, too. I mean, you have... Halloween's is pretty much... I mean, surprisingly, Halloween is very less gore-filled. And... The Fog isn't bad. It's, like, it's more... I mean, Halloween and the Fog are more psychological, more. It's more Hitchcockian. It's, it reminds more on the acting than pretty much the effects. Uh, except for the beginning of the Fog, because Carmen just nails the ghostly stuff, presence of the warnings, and, and the whole sounds going off, and pretty much the chatters. But, uh, but with the ghost pirates, or sorry, the ghost crew of that doomed crew of the ship that went down. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're amusing, I'll say that. But they, uh, it's the fog that's the most chilling part. But, like, I would say, the Prince of, I mean, this is when Carpenter really went to, uh, got his groove in, uh, the gore effects. Because after this, he went just balls out. I mean, there was this film, it was Prince of Darkness, and then you had The Mouth of Madness, so, and that was just amazing. I said, I mean, between this film and The Mouse of Madness, that's my two favorite of Carpenter's gores. Is because the creature work in that, the gore, the death scenes in that are just amazing. And I just, I'm just fascinated by how the detail like the, the, these effects, because it's like a, it's like a magician's trick, a magic trick, because it's so amazing to think, how the hell did they do that? That is just amazing and. Just seeing that done is like wow. You're you're chill, but you're also like wow. That that's good effect work. But uh, 
I mean, I could go on and on talking about this film. This, I mean, this, like I said, this is one of my favorite films. I love Carpenter films. You, you know, going in, Carpenter is going to give you a fun ride, no matter what. The only bad film he ever made was pretty much Ghost of Mars, and that's not really. I don't know if it's called blame him on that because it's there. There's parts of it there that are good. It's just the fact that uh, Ice Cube. Ugh. Ugh. I wish they still had cast Jason Statham in the role, main role back in the movie. If Jason Statham was in the movie, that movie as uh, the main character instead of the third tier character, it would have been a much better movie. They switched it. It roles. It would have been a much better movie. Jason Statham can act his way out of anything and be a badass. <sighs> but that's the flawed one. That's one I mean. I, I love vampires. I love James Wooden. I love Tom C. Griffith overacting and just hamming it up as much as possible. It's an amazing, fun flick. I wish the Scream Factor would release that film because that's the one film I wish that was on there because that's Vintage Carpenter. That's probably my favorite of his last films he's made. I, mean, I haven't seen his uh, latest one he made uh, a couple of years back, but I'm curious to that. I'll probably get that eventually because I love Carpenter films. I eat them up. But uh, for this film, the thing, it's a 5 out of 5. It's one of the best horror films ever made. It's one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. It's just good. From top to bottom, this is a flat-out, amazingly good movie. There's nothing bad about it that I could say. The only bad thing about it is, it's a bad end. But that's the best thing about it. There's no happy endings here. There's just going to be bleakness because you're in a place of nowhere what the hell are you expecting to happen there's no last minute survival here there's no pretty much hope hope died out when the cop was up and went boom uh yeah this is an amazing film and I just can't I mean I'm glad I had someone in this movie but hey I love the thing. I love John Carpenter. This is an amazing film. If you just want something that's just pretty much, you just want to watch something in the dark by yourself or just want to watch it. That's the good thing about Carpenter. His movies, you always pop in like, oh, okay, I'm the movie for this movie. I'll watch this. I mean, you can randomly choose. and you, Any of those movies, you'll be entertained from beginning to end. And the thing is no different. And I just want to say, lastly, um, here we are. One more film left. What's it going to be? Come on. It's Halloween. If I haven't said it already, what my last film is going to be, I'll say it here. It's going to be a producer's cut of Halloween 6. And even that, I'm going to look at the Halloween 6 again, compare both movies. And with that said, I'll see you tomorrow for Halloween.